Hi, Keenan. Can you tell me about IPPA? So um, IPPA was basically started as a hobby. When I first got my iPhone in 2007, uh, I've been doing photography for a long time, and I was working in agencies at creative director at the time. So, and I've been also doing a lot of like human interface design and uh, human uh, interface design Mm -hmm. as a profession. So when I got my phone and what was really interesting to me besides the technology, obviously, how easy um, it was to use. And one thing I noticed that, you know, I started basically, I've been, I started taking pictures with the phone. And and I noticed that people around me who had the iPhone, they've been doing the same thing. So it was really interesting, partly because, you know, there is it's so simple, like you didn't have to do anything or learn anything. You can just like point the phone and take the picture. So the thing that was really interesting to me, the behavior is, you know, I know this, including myself, like I wasn't thinking like, oh, I'm I'm taking like doing photography, what I noticed that it's, I was trying to capture a moment that had some sort of, you know, emotional connection or meaning to me, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's simple, like capturing a moment. It's like, um, you know, recording a timeline, et cetera. So that behavior was the most interesting aspects of it. So what, and then what I did, I basically set up a website and I, start asking people, you know, I knew Ron me and who had the iPhone and who was taking pictures. I asked them to submit their, you know, photos, just pick a few and send it to me. You know, we'll take a look at it. You know, we'll go through some uh, review process and we'll select some, some of the best pictures submitted. So it was kind of an experiment and slash ho- hobby that I started. Mm-hmm. So um, the first year was kind of, really interesting mostly people i knew you know and i started getting you know uh, like i think less than 100 uh, images so it was really interesting going through of course a lot of them was you know people were experimenting you know they were trying you know what to do with it and how to do with it as as it developed you know i <clears throat> kind of continued and start seeing that you know people are you know sending some like it really interesting snapshots of their daily lives whatever they're doing and and so i you know didn't do anything other than the website and you know i I put aside you know i was working you know obviously full-time job and then i would get these things and look at these images um so and then i continue every year and so it started picking up, and I think second year or third year, a publication newspaper in, in Colorado picked it up and wrote an article. And so uh, long story short, um, obviously now it's been uh, 14 years since I've been doing this for, you know, for a long time. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, people start noticing, start getting a lot of coverage, but also... I started getting a lot of submissions, you know, from around the world. And it was really interesting to see all these photos that people were capturing with their phone and submitting. And I, I was also getting some like really good feedback. People like, oh, you know, this is great platform. You know, I'm not a photographer. I'm sure, you know, this whatever I'm sending it might not be great photography, but I really like it. It means a lot to me because this is what it represents. It's slice, you know, of my life or something right. like that. So and anyway, it just grew over the year really organically. And um, so I think like uh, seven, eight years ago, then you know it really picked up because I started getting a lot of um, you know coverage. I think first time Time Magazine, Newsweek, Washington Post, and a lot of um, big publications, you know, around the world start covering it up. And so anyway, that that's really the story, I think. And initially, when I first started, I had a tagline, basically, it was my creative brief, which was celebrating the creativity of iPhone users. 
So it wasn't really even about photography. It was just kind of, you know, what people do with the phone, with this tool that they have, you know, they carry with themselves all the time, constantly. Right. You know, people don't carry, you know, if, if they're using, you know, DSLR or any of the cameras, they don't always carry with, with themselves. But this, you know, device has been with them all the time and anything that, you don't, you know, gets their attention or they like or, you know, they want to capture for whatever it is. It's like a memory and they've been um, kind of taking pictures. So, and I think that's one of the things, and it wasn't really about technology. It's more about, you know, people's life and what those moments mean to them. You know, if you, if you look at the pictures, the winning pictures throughout the years, I think a lot of them has, you know, that's kind of the moments that has some sort of meaning to them. And also, of course, when you have images that are captured like that, you know, people connect to it regardless, you know, where they are from and what their background is and et cetera. So that's been really the story of it. And it's, it's really, it's been fascinating for me to see um, the progress, the amount of images, you know, we get now it's like, you know, more than 140 countries around the world. We get submissions from, from all those places. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's very interesting to see, you know, kind of slice of people's lives and experiences, you know, the moments that some sort of has some sort of meaning to them. Right. And of course, you know, there's always, you know, the comparison of, okay, is what is is this comparable to other cameras or technology, et cetera. But to me, that's not was, the point. Exactly. Yeah, the point. To me, it's more about that because it's like, you know, the tools are tools, right? But I think, you know, what you do with them is, is more important. You know, it just gives us a sense of, you know, how you see the world, you know, your surrounding, you know, all those mm -hmm. things. To me, that's the really most interesting aspect of this. Do you do you think that um, so Chase Jarvis, uh, very yes. well known photographer in the industry, two thousand nine he releases the app Best Camera, yeah, and he writes a book called The Best Camera is the one that's with you, uh -huh. and and this is a year before Instagram comes to market, uh -huh. um, and uh, in fact Best Camera beat Instagram to a million downloads. Now of course Instagram is like way larger, and Best yeah. Camera doesn't really exist anymore. But do you think that two thousand nine two thousand ten um, if you were to look back at your submission count that you saw a big increase after the rise of um, incredible and innovative and creative camera apps for the iPhone and in turn, eventually, obviously, Android and whatnot. But, you know. yeah, I think it's interesting when you look at some like uh, back in the like um, around that time in early submissions, I see a lot of like experiments people were obviously using a lot of apps you know there were all these new apps you know they were really interesting you know hipsomatics a lot of apps mm -hmm. that mimics you know old uh yeah. film kind of style so there was a period where people were experimenting with all those things and you know partly because curiosity and also you know when you have something new you, you basically look at what you know, all those things, what you can do with those new tools. So <clears throat> there was definitely a phase and there was a uh, time in those years, those kind of, you know, photos. I mean, I could see those kind of experimental stuff where people use a lot of apps. Yeah. Um, but I think that was, um, I think it's like with any tool. Like I remember when I first got my video camera, you know, first thing I was doing, you know, you play with the zoom in and out and all those features, you experiment. So it was like that. I think, um, and during that time, there was a big use of app or heavy use of um, different apps. But also it was more experimental. And pe once people start using it, they get more comfortable with it. And they knew like what they would get with which app. And then you know, people become more comfortable with it. It's like a language, you know, once you become fluent in, in a language, you know, you create kind of, you find your own voice, your own style. And then it doesn't, you know, it's not about the, the, that new language 
anymore. It's more about what do you expect express and what do you want to tell? What's your yeah. story? So I think it's it's the same thing with those tools as well. And I, I could see that that evolution. So I have a, a related question to that. Um, so 2013 moment went on Kickstarter and released basically the first legit real lens for iPhones. They have cases mm-hmm. that can accept the iPhones. You can literally swap lenses like like an right. SLR. Mm-hmm. And so I wonder if in 2013 or really when they started delivering, I guess maybe end of 2013 when they started actually arriving in customer hands, if you saw an additional boost of not only more submissions because now people think they can even be more creative with their with their iPhones, but also a different variety of images that are now less Instagram-y and more um, in, you know, sort of quote-unquote in-camera um creative effects that just by using different lenses like a macro you know you couldn't really do a macro with an iphone before that you could but you had these cheapy clip-on lenses that now you have a high quality professional um, lenses professional lens right for iphone so i wonder if that was another change that you you noticed i think anytime there was something new that was introduced that you know improved added to the technical quality of those um those pictures I would definitely see those in the submitted images. Mm-hmm. You know, I think mac- macro is one of them. And you could really, I start, we start seeing those kind of photos. And um, that's definitely, I mean, again, depending what is new improvement or to, whether within a iPhone or in addition to iPhone, like, like external kind of accessories, we could definitely see those you know, photos and people using those tools in a way that's like, I, I mean, there are some some photos that, you know, I, it's, it's it was really hard to believe that it was taken with an iPhone. And then, you know, <laughs> yeah. obviously I was, I was, yeah. I would talk to those people and find out more. And it, it obviously turned out that, you know, people were using some of those additional stuff and getting really comfortable with it. I think yeah. that's, that's again, um, you know, it, it's an ongoing thing. Anytime there's something new, you know, people just experiment and they, if they find that, okay, this is something that, you know, it's in line with, you know, the story I want to tell or just my vision is the way I, I want to see things, you know, you see more, more of those uh, applications in the, in the submitted images. You know, it's, it's interesting what you just said too, because I'm looking at, right now I'm looking at the 2021 winning photographers. And uh-huh. as I scroll down, I'm in the children's section uh-huh. And there's a photo by Diego Marino. And yep. the photo was with an iPhone 5S. Ex- exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right? Right <laughs> now, so the time that you and I are speaking, the most latest phone is the iPhone 12 line. And we're, what, a month or two away from the 13 line or whatever they're going to call Correct. it being announced. Ne- uh-huh. So look how many versions back that people are still utilizing photos or utilizing the camera and yeah. And and still making beautiful images. I know. And it could be it could be that they're just using creative apps. It could be that they're you know um, using the new features that, that are available to them in the older phones, or they're using things like like moment lenses and other accessories that are available to them Correct. to enhance what they couldn't do before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's amazing. It, it is. And and uh, along with what you said, it's hard to believe that so many of these images did come from an iPhone. I well, know, but they did. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, because you know we we have we always verify. You know, obviously there is a digital signature on all the photos, right. especially with it. I mean, you can see which model they're taken with. And I think also, I think a uh, few years back, I think since 2016, 17, we started, you know, putting on the uh, like all the winning images. You can see which model they're taken with. Yeah. So I think also that to me that's very interesting. It really shows, you know, you can take really great images, great photos, yeah. you know, even with the old ones. But I think, again, to me, it goes back to, you know, getting really comfortable with this new language, especially with Instagram and all those tools. Now it's like, you know, it was a new language. And before it was limited really to your technical ability to learn and use it DSLR camera or any other cameras. I mean, I use all kind of cameras, you know, 
from Hasselblad, Leica, those are things that I've been using. I mean, this is another one, but as you become more comf- like fluent with this language, new language, it's amazing to see what you can do with it. I mean, yeah. like one of my still favorite images is the first year's winner. I mean, in 2008 winner, I mean, there is this image that is taking someone took at the Times Square. I mean, the qual- technical quality is not that great, but I think that what the what you don't see in, in the image is like it tells you more about than what you see. It's like it almost like triggers your imagination. It's like, look, what is the story? Who are these people are, you know, and what are they looking at? What are they watching? So I think to me, there is like, it, that's one thing that I see in a lot of really good images. It's like what you see on the frame, it triggers your imagination, viewers' imagination. It takes it to a whole another place. And yeah. you create your own story almost. You're just wondering, it's like, okay, like the, the, the one of the winning images this year is like the guy who's, you know, like with an astronaut suit walking and yeah. like, it's like, I mean, it really, it creates almost like a, it triggers your imagination. It yep. just really engages you in, in the, in the image that you're viewing. So to me, that's really, it, it's, it's really most fascinating aspects of it still. Yeah. That, that photo by, by Dan Liu, uh, from China, second place, uh, for mm-hmm. photographer of the year photo is a walk on Mars shot yeah. with a iPhone, uh, 11 pro max. Yeah. And it, it, the way, so this is one of those areas where it's like, okay, was the sand pinkish or exactly. uh-huh. did, did he use an app like, for yeah. example, Darkroom to do editing yeah. and just use like, you know, um, basically he created his own LUT in, in mm-hmm. Darkroom, for example, um, mm-hmm. and toned the sand color to be mm-hmm. more pink and, and toned the blue to be more pale to give yeah. this Mars sort of look. And either way, it was successful. It's a beautiful, beautiful exactly. photo. So, mm-hmm. um, but that's I think where also more modern camera apps like Darkroom and Halide, Darkroom, which lets you uh, d- do like sort of um, everything you can do in Lightroom, basically, but on your you phone uh-huh. um, with without very lim- many limitations at all, and you can create your own presets and share them. <laughs> and then apps like Halide, which really let you take advantage of the camera's capabilities with each lens and the pro raw that mm-hmm. now what iPhone has inside of the more modern iPhones. So yep. um, I think, I mean, if you look back at the 2008 win- uh, winners, there's some good photos, but then when yep. you look at 2021, you could see the progression of P- of what the cameras, are, what the phone's cameras are capable of, as well as how creative people have become after many years of using their, um, their phones oh, as, absolutely. Their, as, as a camera. So, yeah, absolutely. I think that that's like, I mean, I think also it's one, once in a while, I would just go through and look at those old ones and the new ones. Like, I mean, seeing that, that kind of evolution is pretty amazing. Yeah. And what, I mean, one other thing we, we, I mean, from the beginning we asked, I asked people, you know, especially after those heavy app use phase, you know, said, okay, you can use app, but don't don't take your photo and do like heavy desktop editing, right? right? The way you do. I think the reason for that was that, you know, I wanted to, people to focus on, you know, the image, you know, what it represents, you know, the, the framing of it, the story, the, you know, what you're trying to capture, tell, because all the other stuff, you know, do it if it helps your story. And I think when you look at the top three of this year's, I think the first one, you know, I saw the original unedited shots too. I mean, there's slight editing. And the second one, you know, it's just black and white. You know, there's not heavy editing. And the third one is like, you know, as you explained, you know, it probably did some some more editing. But still, it doesn't like, it doesn't jump at you. It doesn't yeah. like stick out. It doesn't, it, exactly. it doesn't say Photoshop. It doesn't say Photoshop. Yeah. Exactly. It, like, yeah. if it helps your story, you can improve it. You can do things, but do it yeah. in a way that not because, oh, you, you can use this app or you like this app, 
just do it because of the subject, the content, or whatever you know you're you you're trying to convey or capture. I think that that was the reason, and you know people are you know um, you, you can I mean from the images you can tell they're doing an amazing job with that with with simple tool. Of For course, sure. you know one of the you know from the beginning the biggest thing was you know iPhone made it so easy and accessible like technology become invisible in your hand like i remember even now it's like some of the dslr cameras it's so hard to use even that i use like every from film digital a lot of different cameras and you know this is like all you need to do just you know frame something that you think is interesting and you know just capture that's really all you need to do. You need to focus on the, you know, on your story and what you're capturing. To me, that's really one thing. iPhone enabled, you know, users, not necessarily photographers, but of course photographers now do as well. But it, like average users, able to do those things. Yeah. So, to me, that that's just really an amazing, you know, evolution in the sure. last fifteen years. So, so can you walk us through uh, for anybody who's listening to this now? Um, what does the process look like for a photographer to submit their work to the 2022 uh, contest? Yeah, the, I mean the submission is really simple. Um, I mean we do uh, accept you, you go online and basically you select how many images you want to submit. You know, you select your categories. You know, if you know which category you want to submit, and you just kind of go through the checkout process and upload your photos. And if you, you know, if you don't want to select category, you know, if we, we just later on when we go through jury selection process, we can assign the photo, whichever category we think fits best. Right. But that's really, that's all they need to do. It's really simple. You know, obviously there was submission fee for those. I think, I mean, the reason I started doing that because I, I didn't want to get like, you know, your whole yeah. you know photo library. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, I would imagine. I would imagine you'd get spammed with a, yeah. hundreds and hundreds of images. I mean, the yeah. max you have is is fifty images, and somebody has to pay. At the as of right now, it's one hundred thirty five dollars and fifty cents. Yes, I mean, if, if you want to submit fifty, but yeah, when people you know when when they ask and I tell them, I say, okay. Just submit the like, pick the best, your best, few best. You don't have to submit like submitting like. Uh, I mean, some people they want to obviously be part of it. They want to share their stuff, but also some people, you know, they want to get recognition. Especially now, it's like it's really, you know, turning to almost like the Oscar of you know mobile photography mm -hmm. because people get a lot of coverage. You know, a lot of people who were not even like doing serious photography, you know, after winning and they've been interviewed and they were more in different publications in their country or different places so they just started doing seriously but um the the what i recommend we recommend is like you know just pick your best this is like it's not about like submitting a lot of photos and hoping that you know you're gonna get some recognition just think about you know what you think is the best and you know just do that so that's that's what we, we tell people but yeah i mean yeah from i mean some of the there's no i mean some of the winners you know i think this um it's once he only submitted this photo that's it you know there are some people they submit you know more than one yeah. or there are some people 50 but you know the quantity amount of it is not really matter and that's not you know we don't encourage saying oh so you can right. submit all the whatever yeah. Um, the idea is, you know, pick your fo best photo and just send it. Yeah. And the submission and, is really, yeah, simple. And, the, and submitting one image as of right now is five dollars and fifty cents. So that's Correct. again, it's it's yes. very affordable to join to submit your photo. Yes. Um, it's really just a safeguard in place for yeah. you and your team. <laughs> yeah, I think that 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 was the, that was the main reason, you know, because obviously going through. I mean, right now it takes us about three months to go through all the submitted images, you yeah, know. So, so let, let's talk about the judging process. What, do, yes. what does that look like? 
Okay. So um, obviously, the, I mean, every year the deadline is March, end of March, March 31st. Once we close the deadline, you know, we have a few days, uh, maybe up to a week kind of buffer there because some people, you know, they register, but they don't submit or they're whatever. So um, after that, you know, we just go through, um, you know, initial process of, you know, going through every single image, you know, looking at them, uh, organizing, make sure that we have the right information, correct information, and that, you know, they're all submitted, you know, taken with an iPhone or iPad. And once in a while, people, you know, they have a lot of photos, they submit once in a while, we get some that, you know, they took with something else, another camera, etc. So that's the first phase. And then, you know, we have every year, um, we have about like 10 to anywhere from 10 to 15 different judges uh, from different backgrounds, you know, creative directors, media buyers, designers, photographers, uh, some journalists, um, um, architects, and we had um, some people like academics, design professors, etc. So with different background, not necessarily, you know, only photographers. So we did that on purpose. So that's the kind of the, the jury kind of background. And so before we, we kind of put in front of jury, we just went through and I, I go through, you know, every single one of them at the first step, go through all those images and look at them, make sure that they're all correct, right, organized well. And then we have, we go through about three different, three separate steps of selections. Um, you know, at the end of the, uh, the third step, you know, we have kind of almost like, you know, finalists kind of thing. And we organize those things and um, we look at the categories and if, you know, if the categories are not assigned, we just kind of go through that, organize. And then we put those in front of judges. We just kind of send them. It's the whole process, especially now it's online. Um, so judges go through and then they just kind of vote on, on all those images. And we go through and sort uh, uh, voting. Um, and then once we, based on the voting, we organize them again. We just look through one more time together um, and then select the top winners, category winners, and honorable mentions on each category. So, so that's the process. Great. Um, so I, I understand that there, there's different levels, prizes that the, mm -hmm. that the winners receive uh, could be changed every year. But what are some of the prizes that, that you've given away um, over the years? Um, over the years, uh, I remember first year I gave an iMac um, to to the winner. <laughs> so, wow. the, <clears throat> and then I think um, it was 2014. Um, I started since <clears throat> you know I started getting a lot more submissions. So, um, you know, top four, you know winners get apple products you know we have um, ipad pro for the grand prize winner and then or first second third place they get an apple watch so everyone else in the categories the first second third place category winners um we have basically we have certificate for everyone and the first place category winners get a gold bar this little pumps whose gold bar one gram. It's not, you know, to me, it's not about like financial value of it. It's more right. kind of recognition. And yes. also when you look, when you see those bars, it looks like mini iPhone, <laughs> which <laughs> the form of it. So that was the idea. And the, the first uh, place winners of the category gets uh, a gold bar, second and third place, they get um, platinum bars, you know, including their certificates. That, that those are the prices. Of course, I think most for most people, <clears throat> the biggest um, kind of thing is the the coverage that they get globally. I mean, it, yeah. it's, it's pretty amazing the coverage we're getting right now. 
for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, so let's talk about before we wrap this up, uh, this conversation. Let's talk about the grand prize mm-hmm. uh, winning photo, and yeah. that is from Istvan Karekis. I hope Correct. I got his name right. He's from Hungary. Yes. Um, and the title is Transylvanian Shepherds. Mm-hmm. And as as we as you and I talked about earlier, this is actually photographed on an iPhone Seven. Um, Correct. Are you able to share some information about this photo? I don't, I don't know. Did he submit a backstory to you? Um, well, he he did submit. Um, yeah, we usually get the stories, backstories from um, from the winners. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, we used to have those stories, but it, it took a lot of time editing because not every single person thinks about their story. They when we ask them, they like. They try to write it, and a lot of anyway, it, it takes a lot of work. So we just kind of stopped doing that. But with this one, you know, it's fun. He's been basically taking. Um, he has like a whole series of. He's been following these shepherds, um, and he's been taking pictures, kind of documenting their lives, and that's what he's been. Doing. He's a photojournalist, and I mean, it turns out after you know he was selected, you know, we find out more about his background, you know, he's been very successful, you know, he's a very prolific, you know, photographer. So Mm -hmm. this is one of the subjects that he's been, you know, working on for a long time. And I think this, this image is from one of those, um, you know, from that series. And, um, he actually, he had, um, he had from like while he was taking these these photos uh, of the shepherds um i think he used uh, like a regular dslr camera as well so this is one of and also he had his iphone with him as well so this is i guess he's been taken with both and this is one of them that you know he just he just took and you know he's um you know just with little editing he just submitted that one and but um you know if you if you look at his website you know he has a lot of amazing photos you know black and white colors with uh, regular cameras but i think um this is one of the things that he when people even though they're doing you know um with their you know regular dsr cameras and as they especially with you know well with the new models even though this is iphone 7 but people start you know taking you know using their iphone as well and when they see it's like oh wow this is as good as my you know the other one i took so i think that's one of the things that he's been experimenting and of course it's really easy to carry around so he's carrying around you know he said he's been carrying around his phone with him all the time even when he doesn't have his camera dslr but um yeah that's i think it's this is um obviously a subject that he's really interested in and he's been you know, following these shepherds for years. And, you know, you can tell that obviously it's like really, he's really embedded in their lives. I think, you know, it, it's not like, I think you can tell from the photo as well. It's like, this is not like, oh, I, that's, I just took this shot while I was, you know. Right. <laughs> not out for a stroll. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I think that you can see that in the image because, to me, that it, I mean, the image is so powerful. This one, I mean, you see that industrial background yep. and that mm-hmm. barren landscape, and then the expression of these two shepherds and and the lambs. To me, it's really fascinating. But yes, it is like it's not just um, a shot that was done accidentally or by, while he yeah. was passing by. The, the colors that, in this photo are just uh, beautiful. Yeah. It's like it, it's almost like it's muted because it, the whole snow. I mean, that's what snow does to photos. Yeah. But mm-hmm. the, the brown jackets yes. um, and their skin tones yeah. pop off of the gray, I know. Um, you know, dreariness in the background and the snow on the ground. It's just so good. You can also um, almost feel like temperature. Well, I yes. mean, when you look at it, it's like you can feel the, the weather conditions yeah so yeah yeah it's a great great photo i mean all the all the top the top winning photos are fantastic i mean a lot so many of the of the photos that that are in the winners in general just are just so good um i definitely recommend for everybody to check out the 2021 winning photos 
um, overall because each of the different categories, I mean, abstract and, and um, mm. architecture and everything. There's just so many good photos, lots of color, lots of variety. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm just scrolling right now as I talk about it. And Glenn, yeah. Glenn Holman uh, from Australia has a photo of, of he's amazing. Yellow cups. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's been, he's been participating many years all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, he has some really amazing stuff. So if, if this was my photo, um, yeah. and I wouldn't, so it's, his photo is untitled. I would have yeah. titled this not solo because <laughs> <Not> so- <laughs> it, it's literally solo cups that are just, just hundreds of them in this photo. I know yeah. that's right. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell him that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's so many great photos. So I recommend everybody checking them out and, um, you know, if you are uh, a type of photographer who, um, you know, you photograph photos on, on your iPhone and you like experimenting, you like just doing it, you have fun with it, um, consider submitting for 2022. Um, and, you know, it, it can't hurt. Submit one. It's, it's this def- one. Yeah. Yeah. And, you and know, we like to see. Exactly. <laughs> so um, thank you, Keenan, for uh, for joining me and You're uh, very talking welcome about this. Um, and uh, I can't wait to see what happens uh, for the 2022 winners. Great. So. Sounds good. We'll stay in touch. Sounds great. Okay. Bye, Scott. <laughs>